It's a delight to be here. Now, I know that most of you, at some point or another, if you're feng shui consultants going into a space, sooner or later you're going to come across some disturbed energy which you're going to sense as a spirit. So what I'm going to be talking about, if I can, this works, is about uh, releasing earthbound spirits. I'll give you some examples of my own uh, in this, this talk. And it's understanding what we're, we're actually looking at, what might actually be occurring. So the first thing to discuss is definitions. Well, basically, from my perspective, uh, an earthbound spirit is really a spirit that's been trapped or stuck close to the earth plane. Um, and in, in a sense, it has not been able to progress in its evolutionary cycle. Um, on the whole, we're dealing with homo sapiens type spirits, human spirits, uh, the likes of you and I, but as I've said also, it can include animals, elementals, sometimes ET spirits, although I can't think I had to deal with too many of those, although I know some of my colleagues have felt clearly that they're dealing with an ET spirit, spirit which has come from another plane, another planet, or whatever. Spirit release. I like to categorize it into two broad areas. Places, so we're dealing with spirit release in places. Generally, the reasons are fairly easy to comprehend. You need a sort of level of intuitive awareness when you go into a space to sense, is there a spirit here? Um, and with time, you can develop that. You, people themselves might call you in. Certainly, from my perspective, that's often what happens. Got disturbed energy here, can you come and help sort it out? Um, but when you're dealing with a spirit in a place, as I will show you, you can begin to assess fairly readily why, why they're there, what's causing um, the situation. And in my experience, dealing with spirits in places is relatively easy to deal with. Occasionally there can be problems, um, but on the whole, we can, it's fairly easy to move them on particularly when you're dealing with it in localized situations. Spirit could be stuck here in this room, uh, and you can connect to it, but also we could talk about spirits stuck in larger areas, such as battlefield sites. Uh, and some of the things which you can begin to find if you're in your feng shui work is that uh, occasionally properties are put up in areas which have got, had a lot of disturbance from the past. Uh, and so in that case, there could be groups of spirits which are involved in, in a situation, not just one. And that will create, in inverted commas, geopathic stress in the, in the area that you're looking at. But even so, uh, with a battlefield site, although I would encourage individuals perhaps not to work alone in those types of cases, and I certainly work within a group context when I am uh, doing uh, larger areas, um, it's relatively easy to sort these situations out. However, when we come to dealing with spirit-releasing people, um, we begin to enter into a much, much more complex area. Because one of the things is to, to understand why the spirit has attached itself in the first place, what might be going on within the psyche of the person that's drawn this spirit to them. Um, and in my experience, uh, just to try to remove the spirit off, uh, what invariably happens is a couple of days later they come back and say it's all come back again. The situation to just return back as it was. So unless you deal with the underlying causes as to why that spirit has actually connected into that individual, attached itself to that individual, your ultimate success is probably going to be very limited. So when the point's going to come, inevitably, when all of us are going to kick the bucket, we're going to pass over into the other world. And I would like to think, from my point of view, and I hope from your point of view, that this is what will occur. First of all, you will feel you're detaching yourself from your physical body. Uh, and in the near-death experience, people have a view of being able to look down at themselves from the ceiling and, uh, and to see uh, things which are going on around them. So, what we can say is there is part of our consciousness which is when it's in the physical body, we can not be so aware about what's going on, but when we step outside of ourselves, we can become very aware. But the spirit separates from the body. Then in the near-death experience, they talk about going through a tunnel. Sometimes it's described as the tunnel of light. Um, and then eventually, they will come through into the spirit realm, 
and meat. Um, sometimes a being of light, sometimes uh, individuals, parents or grandparents that they know have passed over. But of course in the near-death experience they get told, not your time to come over yet, you've got to come back and they retrace their, their steps back into the physical body. So that's what should occur. However, sad to relate, what happens is sometimes spirits get stuck at that first stage. Uh, and there's different reasons why they get stuck. And it, it generally falls into a few categories. So these are some of the reasons for, uh, for being stuck. Quickly, I realize time is running on, um, but just to throw up another area. Uh, of, of work which can be involved in all of this. To become conscious and aware that sometimes there's energy lines which run around the planet, key energy lines which hold um, powerful spiritual energies. And there's one running down through Africa. In Zimbabwe, uh, in, in recognizing this line and tuning into it, there was a whole lot of disturbance around the ruins of Zimbabwe, the ancient ruins. A lot of trapped spirits there and beginning to release all of those trapped spirits is in a way of starting to help free up some of the uh, disturbances which are going on in the, in the Mugabe regime. So sometimes actually beginning to think about the links of places, what needs to be cleared energetically in order to start to bring healing and balance and release. So what steps? So, coming down to a practical level, you sense there's a spirit in the room. What do you do? First thing I think is very important if you're working on your own is you really need to put up your protection. You really need to ask for as much help and guidance as you, as you possibly can. And uh, also to try to telepathically communicate with the spirit. Why are you here? What's gone on for you? What's your story? Uh, what can you convey to me that I can get an insight in? How can I telepathically help you? Um, you know, is it a problem that you have or is there some way that we can resolve all of this? Then you need to intuitively sort of connect. Imagine that there's a tunnel of light. That's something like imagine it's a great lift shaft. The lift shaft in the sky, bringing that down uh, around the spirit and uh, connect to, to, if you've got a healing guide or if I'm working with the Egyptian archetypes, the god Anubis was the first one who took the spirits into the, into the afterlife. But um, many people call upon the Archangel Michael, whatever. Whatever you feel is right and appropriate, work on it. And then, very gently, just lift this spirit uh, up into the, uh, into the afterlife. And it will, um, it will, you can sense and feel them actually going. And of course, once you have done all of that, once the spirit has moved on, then you can go about the, the, the process of space clearing, resetting the energy, um, creating a, a, a good balanced feeling within that, uh, within that location. But if the spirit's there and you try to do it, clear the space, you're gonna, it's going to still keep coming back. You have to deal with the spirit. If the spirit is stuck in a place, um, you have to deal with that first. Thank you.